This video is brought to you by NordVPN. As the year progresses, we get closer and closer to another general election. And as we do, each week it seems that things are only getting worse for Sunak, and Starmer seems to be getting ever closer to getting the keys to number 10. In fact, only last week, a Yukov poll suggested that Sunak is on track to win fewer seats than John Major did in the 1997 New Labour landslide election, and Starmer could be set to win an unprecedented 403 seats. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how bad things are right now for Sunak, what the polls are saying about him and his party, and why things are unlikely to get any better in the coming months. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So, let's get started by going through some of the key findings from that poll I mentioned a moment ago. And it's also worth noting why this poll is so significant. Unlike other polls that simply give an overall national voting intention, an MRP poll is able to show what people are thinking on a constituency level giving us information specifically about how many seats each party would win if there was an election tomorrow. Now, the last major MRP poll took place in January and predicted that Labour would achieve a 120-seat majority, with them on 385 seats and the Tories on 169. But last week's poll showed that things had gotten even better for Labour and even worse for the Tories, with Labour now predicted to achieve a 154-seat majority over the Tories, with Labour themselves breaching the 400-seat mark. The Tories, on the other hand, would only achieve 155 seats, making this the worst defeat ever in their history. It's worth noting here too that while there has been a lot of concern about the impact of Reform UK on the Tories' polling, this MRP poll predicts that while Reform would achieve 12% of the national vote, they would win no seats. In fact, they wouldn't even come close to winning a seat, with their best result being in Barnsley North and Hartlepool, where they would achieve 27%, a number that might sound impressive, but is still 20 points behind the Labour candidate predicted to win. Now, this isn't to say that Reform UK wouldn't have an impact on the election. Even without winning any seats, they're still likely to take votes away from the Conservative Party and make it even harder for them to win the election. But regardless, for Sunak, this MRP poll just looks like even more bad news. It does seem that Reform are squeezing him from the right, and his assumption that waiting longer for election will make things easier for him might not necessarily be true. And to top it all off, he could be about to oversee the Tories' worst defeat ever. However, it is worth asking if we can infer all of this from just one poll. After all, polls have been wrong before, and we may still be six months out from the election. So it's worth instead looking at a bunch of other factors to see whether the electorate are truly ready for a Labour government. In this regard, good indicators to check are whether the public actually like Labour's leader as leader, whether they trust Labour in the most important policy areas, and whether the public think that Labour are now united. So, let's run through those. Britain elects, a polling aggregator, put Starmer's net approval rating at positive 2, which is a pretty healthy score on the whole. Similarly, YouGov has found that, for the entire time Starmer has been leader, he's been ahead of Sunak on the poll of who people think would make a better Prime Minister. In fact, his lead on this metric is, as of March 31st, still sitting at 13 points. Just to add to this too, a poll from January found that the only characteristic that Sunak beat Starmer on is charisma, and even then only by two points. Key standouts for Starmer though are his honesty and authenticity, which Starmer holds an 11 and 10 point lead on respectively. And when it comes to trust in the economy, Labour also commands a small lead of six points. Nonetheless, considering that this is the most important issue to voters right now, as the cost of living crisis continues to eat away at people's earnings, Labour being ahead on this backs up the argument that the MRP poll is right, and that the Tories are on track for historic defeat. However, on the final metric, things don't look as good when we consider the perception of Labour as a party united. Right now, 34% of people think that the party is divided, and only 31% think that it's united. 
Now, it's worth acknowledging that these numbers are very similar, and it's not as though an overwhelming majority of people think that the Labour Party are divided right now. And also, when we compare these numbers to the Tories, things look even better for Labour. So if we combine together all of these metrics, and even the wider MRP poll, things only seem to be getting worse for Sunak, which puts them in something of a doom spiral. The worse the polling gets, the more divided the party becomes, with each faction thinking that it's the others to blame for their free fall in the polls. This in turn worsens Tory polling, and so on. In fact, there are two main effects of this doom loop. The first is that businesses will switch their allegiances, and the second is that the media will do the same, with them no longer feeling that they can trust the Tories. In fact, it's been reported that about half of business leaders now back the Labour Party, and about a quarter of those leaders who back Tory in 2019 now back Starmer. Considering that the Tories are normally the party of business, this is both quite impressive for Labour and pretty damning for the Tories. On the media front, there are also reports that Rupert Murdoch is beginning to lean Labour, and sources close to him have suggested that if Labour maintains a strong lead over the Tories, then his papers could back Starmer. Again, this would be yet more bad news for Sunak. Although the papers do certainly hold less power than they did a few decades ago, an endorsement from the big papers is still useful. In fact, Archie Bland, writing for The Guardian, argued that while the number of voters likely persuaded by a formal endorsement would be trivial, stories on the Labour Party would get a more sympathetic hearing, and this, in turn, would persuade more investors to back the Labour Party. He also argues that the BBC, who are more influential now than traditional newspapers, are still influenced by decisions made by Fleet Street. So a downstream effect of getting such papers on side is getting more favourable coverage by other news organisations like the BBC. All in all then, it's clear that polling is indeed getting worse for Sunak, and that the effect of this is to further reinforce the Tories' doom spiral. This doom spiral itself is only making things worse for the Tories electorally, with them losing support from businesses and the media. So if Sunak does still want to turn things around it's looking to become an increasingly difficult task as each and every day passes. Now, watching our videos, it's understandable if, at times, you feel like the world isn't terribly safe. And unfortunately, this can be the case online too. You might try your best to keep everything secure. Maybe you rotate through a few favourite passwords online, but that's not always enough to keep you safe. In fact, the most common form of account hacking these days is called credential stuffing. Essentially, if you use one of your normal passwords on a website that's poorly maintained and then gets compromised, you could find that your information ends up landing on the dark web. Then hackers just attempt the same email and password combination on other websites. Your social media accounts, streaming services, banks, you get the point. Luckily for you though, NordVPN has a whole bunch of tools that can keep you safe online, with their suite of threat protection tools including a dark web monitor, which notifies you if someone leaks your credentials. It's not just that though, their threat protection can also warn you about phishing links and block malicious ads before you even see them. It really is all round protection for your digital life. And if you sign up for a two year plan using our link, you'll not only get a massive discount, but you'll also get four extra months free. So if you want to support the channel and improve our journalism, then make sure you use the link in the description so that they know you came from us. And that way you'll also get their great service at a discount.